Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. So we've had the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit and we've had the announcement of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, also the Snapdragon X Elite. I've got videos about both of those new announcements here on this channel. And now we've got some benchmarking information about the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And the question is, how will it do this year compared to the competition and compared to itself? the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 from last year. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Let's dive straight in. What are we using to test the performance of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3? The answer is the QRD, the Qualcomm reference device. For the last few years, when Qualcomm announces a new SOC, it also produces a prototype phone, fully functioning uh, Android smartphone, uh, and it's got the new processor in it, and then it can run uh, software, it can run the benchmarks, it can run 3D Mark, it can run uh, Geekbench and so on, and we get an idea of the performance. Now, real life phones that come out later this year, the end of the, towards the year or the beginning of next year, generally have slightly less performance because the QRD tends to be a bit thicker, have a bit better thermal uh, properties. However, it does give us a really good idea of the kind of performance we can expect to see in devices coming out pretty soon. So let's dive straight in. This is Geekbench 5. Geekbench 5 scores comparing QRD, uh, Qualcomm reference devices, over the last few generations. So here was the QRD for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the 8 Plus Gen 1, the 8 II, and now the 8 III. And as we can see in each of these cases, the single threaded score has gone up uh, incrementally over every year, as you'd expect. And here we can see the same for the multi-threaded. However, what's interesting here is that we see a 15% increase from last year to this year for the uh, QRD. And for multi-threaded, we see a 31% increase. And if you've seen my video on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, you'll uh, notice that we've got those five middle cores, those five Cortex-A720 cores, and that's clearly having a good impact on the multi-core score. Now what that means in real world terms is that whatever we saw in, let's say, a Samsung device or a OnePlus device last year, we can expect a kind of a 15% increase in performance this year to whatever they were giving us last year according to the clock speeds and the battery life and the size of the battery and the thermals that they, they opted for last year and the same for multi-threaded. We can do the same thing for 3D Mark. We can see all the different increase. Now, here is a big increase there. You can see not so much of an increase there. Uh, that was just going from the 8 to the 8 Plus. Bigger increase here, huge increase here. In fact, a 40% increase in the performance of 3D Mark from compared to last year's reference device. So that shows us there's certainly a lot of potential for increased graphics performance in handsets for the coming year. Okay, so let's compare that now to actual devices. Again, noting this is the reference device, but what do we see here? This is Geekbench 6, both single core and multi-core scores. And the big thing to notice here is that over here on the right-hand side, we see a 3% increase over the iPhone 15 Pro. So that's the one with the latest processor from Apple, the A17 Pro. Yes, different core configurations. Yes, Apple do it with six. This is with eight. Absolutely understand that, but the reality is, is that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has the potential to be faster than the iPhone 15 Pro in multi-core scores. When it comes to single core, uh, Apple is still the king uh, with that very high score there, 2,931 compared to 2,319. Now when we look at 3D Mark, we've got quite a lot of interesting stuff. There's three different graphics tests shown here. One is 3D Mark Wildlife, that's the top one for each of the phones. Then we've got 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, that's the next one down. And the final one is the Solar Bay, which is the ray tracing test. So let's put some numbers on here. So first of all, we can see that again, that big increase from the 8 Gen 2 to the 8 Gen 3, 13,298 in the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, 19,096. Now that's a 43% increase. As I said, we're going to see this kind of 30%, 35% increase in the graphics performance from last year's phones to this year's phones, just depending again on the thermal properties of the actual devices that come out. But this is showing you just how huge this difference is. Now, when it comes to the Wildlife Extreme, we can see here again, 5,325 for the reference phone, 
4025 for the iPhone 15 Pro with the A17 Pro in it and then 3,823. So previously, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Apple was leading in the Wildlife Extreme GPU test. It was beating the Galaxy S23 Ultra. However, now we're definitely gonna see phones that come out uh, towards the end of this year, next year. The next generation of phones is gonna beat uh, the iPhone 15 Pro, the Pro, not just the iPhone 15, the iPhone 15 Pro on graphics without any problem whatsoever. And that is also 30% difference there again. And here we're going to see the same for the ray tracing, 88,828, 6,430, 5,570. Again, Apple was in the lead, but now clearly the next generation of phones are going to do much better. Putting some percentages on that, we can see that's 37% faster. The reference device is 37% faster in ray tracing graphics than the iPhone 15 Pro. And the final thing I've got here for us today is some stress tests. Again, noting that the reference device does have uh, unique thermal uh, properties. However, you can see here absolutely huge gap compared to the rest of the field, basically. And that manages to stay pretty well up until like eight nine runs of the of the test before it starts to take a bit of a dive so that is very impressive for some gaming that we're going to see and then it kind of recovers later on a uh, bit up and down there we'll see what real devices can do but this does show a preliminary shows that there isn't going to be a massive throttling problem with the H Gen 3 certainly according to the reference device and certainly according to this first bit of the running here. So it'll be really interesting to see what we get when we see actual devices running and see how they handle the stress tests. Okay, so there you go, the 8 Gen 3. That's a really exciting set of benchmarks. As I said, that is the reference device from Qualcomm. Things will be slightly different when we see devices from Xiaomi and Samsung and OnePlus and whoever else. But it's really interesting to see what we're going to get in this next generation of smartphones. Do tell me in the comments below, what do you think about those benchmark numbers? Do you think that's impressive? Is that going to sway you in maybe a purchasing decision for the year ahead? Love to hear your thoughts. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Sims. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.